We're at the uh, Media Innovation Summit 2011 with Dan Coates. Dan, you did a great job of moderating a panel on youth and what they're doing with technology. And why don't you tell us a little bit about the millennials? Well, listen, the first thing to know about the millennials is that they're the largest generation in American history, topping out at over 100 million members. So anytime you've got such a big generation, everything they do, whether it's buying things or consuming things or watching things, tends to have an outsized impact in terms of um, viewership, spending, and, uh, and also customership. Well, and uh, we saw, uh, you know, the panelists, um, any answers that they provided to you that kind of surprised you? Uh, you know, the one thing about, about, you know, doing research is that any lake, you know, that's on average three feet deep, you'd drown in if you tried to walk across it. Right. So kids are all different. But then when you sort of aggregate them together, you quickly become aware of the fact that there's some trends. The, the seven core traits of millennials, the fact that they're kind of special, uh, sheltered, um, team-oriented, uh, conventional, uh, pressured and achieving. And, and certainly they, as a generation, um, you know, they're, they're great in size and they're also great in capacity. They're probably one of the most technologically proficient generations ever. Uh, you know, in most households, the CTO is, uh, is, the, uh, is the kid, not the father. And, um, you know, in addition to them having great spending power on themselves, they influence a lot of what goes on in the household. Most, most households nowadays ask, you know, the, the son or the daughter which TV is the best one to buy, which gaming system is the best one to buy. Parents have sort of abdicated the throne, as it were, when it comes to technology. Yeah, and I failed to mention that you were uh, president and CEO of Y Pulse, and you uh, re regularly reach out to was it eighty thousand uh, young people? Well, we do research for all the big brands. Uh, we focus on kids thirteen to thirty, and and one of the tools that we use to do that is eighty six thousand kids that we've got a relationship with nationwide. So we recruit them to sort of take our surveys and participate in our discussions, and it's from them that we kind of generate the the insights that then we help brands figure out what to buy. I was I was talking to somebody. Just just now during the networking break and saying that in a lot of ways when you want to develop products for kids the best thing to do is to get them involved early. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you what they like and don't like. They'll tell you what, where they think the opportunities are. Uh, for our generation to think that we can create um, products and services for youth without talking to them first is a little bit silly, isn't it? Well, and uh, of course it is. And, and one of the things I've learned from you is just it's, it's not only about the product, but it's how, it seems like it's how you present it. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, you know, there's a lot of priorities for this generation. They design is really important. They like to be able to customize and personalize things. Um, and, and certainly, you know, uh, this generation is now very cost conscious. You know, they think more about what the product doesn't need as opposed to, you know, let's add another thing to it. Um, but, but that being said, um, you know, this generation uh, has, has real preferences. Uh, the good news is, is they don't mind using or wearing or driving the same thing as their friends do. In fact, they're very peer-to-peer. -peer. Mm. They don't mind, you know, doing things together. Uh, whereas previous generations like to differentiate themselves. They wouldn't drive the same car as their friends were driving. They wanted to have something distinctive, individualistic. This generation is more than happy to wear what the other kids are wearing, shop where the other kids are shopping, and drive what the other kids are driving. Well, one of the things I observed, and just from the standpoint of the uh, social network you put together just for this group of students we had, was the whole idea, too, of um, kind of the barriers of age go, seem to go away. Whether a seventh grade or a ninth grade girl talking to a seventh grade boy, those kind of barriers seem to kind of almost fade. Yeah, although I will say this, you know, a lot of these trends are accelerating. If you talk to an older millennial about a younger millennial, they say, you know, these kids are crazy with technology. I mean, I text, but 1,200 messages a day, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. But, uh, you know, a lot of these things are changing through the course of the generation. Another interesting thing is that early millennials were mostly had boomer parents, and now the later millennials have Gen mm -hmm. X parents. There's a slightly different style to what Xers versus what boomers, you know, place as priorities within the household. But that being said, you know, no matter what the parents think, technology, society, everything's moving so fast that you, know, you only have so much control over what's going on, what kinds of things um, your kids are exposed to, and what kinds of preferences that they develop. So you kind of have to just get on that wave and ride it with them, it sounds like. Huh? Yeah, you know, I've got a 12-year-old and a 15-year-old, and despite all that I know about this generation, you know, they're their own people, and, and, and they, you know, uh, there, there's no way that you could sort of uh, uh, control and shape it. They're going to take it down their own path, as every generation has since the history of time. Well, Dan, I appreciate your insight on this and, uh, and look forward to further conversations. Great. Thanks, Thanks. Ken.